Okay. So this is the intro to Kali Linux course. A little bit about me. I'm Wyatt Nutter. I am a student at Marshall University in the Digital Forensics and Information Security Program. I graduate next week. I just got hired on as a security analyst at a company called ReliaQuest. Where are they based out of? Florida. Does anybody have any questions before we begin? Okay, so who here is comfortable in Linux? You know what you're doing. This is going to be more review. Who's seen it before, used it a little bit, but not really comfortable? And who has no idea how to use Linux? Okay, okay, that's fine. So the first thing I want to walk through is how to set up a new Kali Linux virtual machine. So, IR, you can download an ISO file from, I think it's Kali.org. It should be the first one that shows up in Google. I have a 64-bit ISO. So, install from disk or image. What are you doing? Uh, it's, it's this thing called uh, it's Kali Linux. It's canceled, bro. Oh, is it? <laughs> That's it. Professionalism. <laughs> so, it already shows up. Continue. You want to go to other, in my case, other 64-bit for the style of operating system. Can everyone see this okay, or do I need to make it bigger? Okay. So, from here, I want to customize the settings. You can name it, whatever you want. Now... Here, the settings, it's important. Let's see. I want to go to hard disk. 8 gigabytes is not enough for Kali Linux to install. It'll fail about halfway through. I'm going to set that to 21 gigabytes. Okay, show all. <coughs> Processors and memory. 256 meg is a little low. I like to bump it up. I think it lets me do. So from here, we play it. And at this point, it is just a Kali Linux install. Can I help you, though? Um, I'm the official photographer. Uh, I wanted a 64-bit version. Do you have any? Yep. Where are they? Right there. <laughs> okay, I got it. Thanks. Okay, careful you don't spill any Diet Coke on my laptop. <laughs> uh, install. I'm going to let it run through, because I've got some stuff I want to talk about in the meantime. It'll take probably 20, 30 minutes. I have a question. Yes. Will this be on test? Yes. <laughs> uh, I actually have a quiz at the end. Uh, I don't have any certificates if you pass it, though. Sorry. English, we're in the US, sure. Use American English keyboard. So. From here, the way I want to handle this is essentially going to look a lot like the P-Test or concentration testing framework. I want to start with passive recon, which is trying to get information about a network without ever sending a packet to that network. I want to move into active recon, which is where you get into visiting the website, seeing how it's laid out, doing in-map scans and that sort of thing. Moving into exploitation with set and metasploit, and going into post-exploitation. So from here, you just hit continue for the host name. Don't need a domain name, hit continue. Root password. For simplicity's sake, I'm just going to type in root backward. You want this to be something secure, because even if you're running a VM, you don't want to have weak passwords. Continue, re-enter. Eastern time zone. And there is a graphic install, it's just a little bit slower in my opinion. So, for partitioning, just use the entire disk because it's going to sound like it'll overwrite your main partition, but it won't. This is just within VMware. 
So I think it's up to the 21 gigs, is it just going to keep expanding? I don't believe so. I think you have to manually allocate more space. It'll just tell you, like, hey, I can't do this anymore. All files in one partition. Finish partitioning and write changes to disk. It's going to highlight no by default, so you have to move to yes. Do write the changes. And from here, it's installing. So, is there any major disadvantages to um, running off the thumb drive? Like, I know if you have a VM, you can take a snapshot and trash it and then come back, but is there any... Running off a thumb drive, it's going to be a little slower. Um, depends on whether you're using USB 2.0 or 3.0 as well. Uh, it's going to be a little slower. But with Kali Linux, it shouldn't make a huge difference until you get into scanning and exploiting. And you can also run this as your boot partition. You can have Kali be your operating system for your entire computer. It is faster that way, and it is much easier to network running the instead of a virtual machine, just running a computer with Kali on it. But for me, it's a little bit easier to just run a VM because you can use the laptop for other things as well. And if you manage to completely screw up your virtual machine, you can either get rid of it or revert to a snapshot. <clears throat> From here, passive recon. We will just use securewv.com as our target in this case. So one of the first things you can do, find a whois lookup. I like using whois.ican.org. From here, just type in your domain name. <coughs> I'll give you a capture. So you can get you can get quite a bit of information out of a who is record, depending on the contacts. Sometimes you'll find that you get one in one private registration or something similar. That means whoever set this up did their homework, they know what they're doing, they don't want their personal information plopped out there for anyone to see. You can find contact information, mailing address, phone number, email. And this can be useful for spear phishing attacks, trying to gather email addresses, find who's working at an organization, what they do. Does anybody have another website they want to look up, another domain? Yes. 4chan. 4chan? Okay. Go see security. Go see security. This, again, scrub, it's all 4chan host master, so this not going to find anything particularly useful here. Uh, Bill, don't you have a website? You still have that? You got rid of it? Yeah, I have that website called The Daily Stormer. Oh, yeah? Yeah? <laughs> so what's the I URL for that? The leader of the alt-right. <laughs> okay, sure, that's a great example. What's the URL for it again? www.dailystormer.com So for anybody who's not familiar with Weave, uh, <laughs> the Daily Stormer is a neo-Nazi website <laughs> run by Andrew Auernheimer, otherwise known as Weave. He's the guy that got arrested uh, and imprisoned back in 2011 for AT&T customer data. Mm -hmm. So, all private registration again, not surprising. The next thing I want to move into is Google hacking. It's a fantastic way to find open source information that in some of which shouldn't be online whatsoever. So, let's see. First thing you want to do is go to your settings and search settings. So what Google hacking is, is no, we're not going to go hack Google. Uh, it's using their advanced search operators to try to find information that <coughs> admins probably don't even know is being indexed by Google. 
So first thing we want to do, we don't want to show the instant results as we type. It gets bogged down pretty quickly. Depending on your processing speed and internet connection, we'll do 50 results per page. Uh, we'll go ahead and turn on safe search since we're in an academic setting. But generally, if you're doing a penetration test and you find something pornographic in nature, that's something the website administrator should know about and would want to know about. So keep safe, safe search off so those results turn out. Save, and that should do. So, one of my favorite queries, it's very general, you use the in title operator. And what that does is any text in the title of a web page will appear. Do index dot of. So, got ahead of myself a little bit. The general syntax for Google queries is operator colon query. And it is delimited by spaces. So anytime you put a space in, it will break the operator and start a new. And the period stands in as a wild card. So index dot of will show any web page with index of in the title. And that's helpful for finding directory listings. It's common verbiage to find index of a directory. Usually you can just search this and you'll find quite a few things. One thing I've noticed, uh, this is why we keep safe search on, by the way. So one thing I've noticed is a lot of the times you'll find universities that have personal web pages around 2005 to 2008 when that was the popular thing to do. And a lot of people put pictures in there that should not ever be put in there. Because it looks like they don't know that that's public information. They just used it as private storage. But you can also find other documents sometimes that probably shouldn't be made public either. And where you can find a plethora of Google queries is Exploit Database. They have a Google Hacking Database specifically set up for this. So, files containing passwords. They have 200 different, different queries listed right now that will search specific types of files for passwords. Find an easy one. Okay. Here's a good one. So what this does, ext is essentially just the extension of a file. You can also use file type as that operator. And this is looking for CSV or comma separated value files. And the in text operator does the same thing as in title just in the body of the web page. So this will look for any CSV files with the word password in them. It's beautifully simple. But unfortunately, this one is too simple to be very useful. It's just bringing up a lot of login pages. Out. He's old. He needs to get closer to see. Oh, exactly. <laughs> he's, he's bringing the procession. You might want to keep an eye on Taylor. She's having some issues with Kelly. She told me to leave because that smells bad. Okay. Must be the best guy. I got it. You got it. Okay. He's see if I can. I got that one. The discs are giving me the business. It's not a big deal. I'll figure it out. You sure? You. Yep. <clears throat> Suspect USB. I've got it on here. I mean, is that better? <laughs> You're not really selling me on that. <laughs> you awesome. can actually see it now. Okay. Yeah. If this doesn't work, I'll, I will take you up on that. Thank you. What's the URL again for this? That is exploit-db.com. 
And we'll be using this again later. This is essentially a compilation of a whole bunch of vulnerabilities. So. Wasn't there a book about this written? There was, actually. Johnny Long, he's the create, well, the founder of Hackers for Charity and co-authored by Professor Bill Gardner from Marshall University. There's a Google hacking for penetration testers. Thank you for giving him credit after you left. <laughs> yeah, it makes it so much better. <laughs> See, here is the latest version on Barnes & Noble. Uh, fun fact, when they were first released, uh, the publisher messed up some of the screenshots, so we had screenshots in the wrong places, miscaption. I don't know if it was ever fixed, but for a good laugh, ask Bill about it when he comes back in. So, go back to this. We do not want to use a network mirror. We don't need it. If the install fails, I've got another one ready to go. It's fine. So, back to the Google hacking, because this is one of my favorite things uh, to look through. Let's see. Juicy info. <laughs> If anybody sees one they want to see, just yell it out. Search for like web.com. What is it? Search for like web.com. There's some good Google hacks to look in the web config or embedded passwords. And there's usually some. Gotcha. Okay, where are you seeing? Are you seeing that up here or? Uh, not well. Um, it's in the exploit database. Just okay. <clears throat> if you just. And how do you spell that? Web. Dot com. Com. C o n. F i g like config. Okay. C o n. Oh. I'll take off your juicy. Just do it in all. Oh, yeah. So, which one is it? Um, Do you have it pulled up? I can just type in the query if you have it. Yeah, it's in double quotes. Password equals. In a space. In URL. Colon web dot com space minus in text colon web dot com space oh I'm sorry it's config it's not oh gotcha gotcha they're both config. Uh, then add, <coughs> add look for extensions, ext colon, <coughs> config. Okay, so this is looking for .config files with the exact phrase password equals space. With any web page that has web.config in the URL but not in the text of the web page. Yep, 
And already on a couple of these, uh, what that first one looks, it's under image, and you can see plain text passwords if you look. Well, let's see if I can zoom this in again. So, can everyone see that? A lot of these are going to be data sources, Hibernate, SQL Server, passwords. Yep. So, there you have it. And each of these, they have a funny little term. They call them Google dorks. Just any piece of information you can find on Google that shouldn't be public, much less indexed by Google. Does anybody have any questions about that? Back here. Yes. here. Select the device by default. Now, is anyone installing this along with me? Is anybody setting up their Kali environment right now? Do you have any questions or any issues so far? Okay. So, a installation complete. Maybe. While well, it does that, I already have one running, so. Yeah. We found one here. It's some guy's Gmail address, username, and password because he has an SMTP server set up nice. for Gmail. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty bad. Brilliant. <laughs> Here's my Gmail account for my SMTP server. <laughs> All right. So yeah. there was one tool I wanted to go over as part of Passive Recon, and that's called the Harvester. So what this does is it will take specific information sources. Uh, you can actually see the data sources here. Google, Google CSE, CSE Bing, PGP, LinkedIn, Twitter. This looks for email addresses primarily. Let's see, you can do DNS brute forcing for domain names, reverse queries. We're not going to get into that. I just want to do a very high level example for it. So we'll do, we'll run it again, uh, securewb.com again. Use Dash B option for, to specify our data source. We want Google, but that should come after our domain. The domain you want to search dash D secure wv.com. We want to use a dash L to limit the number of results. Let's do 100, and we'll drop this into harvester.txt. The only thing we found was coninfo at securewv.com. Does anybody else have an example that they want to try to use? Now keep in mind, this is only searching in Google. This does not send a single packet to the target network. We'll do daily stormer. So we didn't find any email addresses associated with that domain on Google. Does anybody have any questions about this? Uh, any other examples they want to see with it? We can try it again. 
in vain, as opposed to Google, see if it gives us anything different. Example three. No, she tells So, does that make sense to everyone? Any questions at this point? Okay. The next thing I wanted to get into is active recon. This is where you actually go to a website to find information, scan the target, and first, we'll, oh hey, it works. Look at that. So, I'm going to go ahead. <coughs> Open this up just so we can close it back out. So, here we can go to about. We can see 304 geeks is. The uh, organization responsible for hosting the event. So, we can go into plenty of rabbit holes trying to look for information, but does anyone have any questions on where to go from here? Okay. I do have. Uh, a metasploitable VM that I'm going to use to do in map scanning. At this point, I'm going to set my Kali Linux machine to host only for networking. Uh, the reason being, you don't want to be firing exploits across a network if you don't own that network, first of all. And you definitely don't want to misfire. Uh, and send an exploit to the wrong target. So this just kind of adds an extra layer of protection that keeps you away from the internet with it. InMap is a port scanning tool. Is everyone familiar with what a port is? Does anybody not know? And it's okay if you don't. I've got an explanation ready. <laughs> Somebody say they don't know what a port is. Yeah. Okay, awesome. <laughs> so it, it's essentially uh, an extension of your IP address that tells the computer what application network traffic needs to go to. So whenever you have port 80, that's a web server. So anytime a computer gets something with port 80 attached to it, it'll send it to your web browser. And the way InMap generally works by default is by abusing the TCP handshake. Does anybody not know how TCP initiates a connection? Who does know? Okay, a lot of hands not up. So it's called a three-way handshake, and that's because when you initiate a connection through TCP, computer A sends a synchronized packet to computer B. Computer B sends back a synchronized acknowledgement packet. Computer A sends back an acknowledgement packet. And that's essentially me walking up to someone saying, hi, how are you? They say, good, how are you? And he's saying, I'm fine. And what InMap does, is it cuts off when it gets a synchronized acknowledgement or a synact packet. So it says, hi, how are you? The server says, I'm good, how are you? And Map stops replying. And the reason it does that is because that breaks off the connection before it's fully formed, and it no longer gets logged. Have I lost anyone? Does that make sense, kind of? Okay. So, I'm going to do here, just pull up, 
And Metasploitable is just a vulnerable Linux distribution made to be hacked. Uh, it has enough vulnerabilities that you'll pretty much never stop finding them. And right now I'm just waiting for it to load up so I can do an IF config and have its IP address really quickly. But actually we can just find it with nmap. So nmap dash, or, uh, dash sn will... Yeah, that'll just run a ping scan rather than a full port scan. It is much faster for discovering hosts that accept ping requests. So... Do an IF config on our Kali Linux machine. We find this 192.168.108.131. So we're in the 108 subnet, which is where the Metasploitable VM will fall as well. So what we can do, dash V is for verbose. That gives you output as the scan is running. Dash SN, 192.168. Dot 108 0 slash 24. This will scan from 0 to 255. Uh, does that make sense to everyone? Do I need to explain what that's doing? Okay. So, this is only pinging each host one time or each potential host. So, we find that we have a single host path. And that is 192.168.108.254. Copy that. Since we don't care about being quiet, we're just going to throw everything that nmap has at this IP address and see what comes back up. Do dash B, dash A for all scripts. Paste that. It'll first run just a basic nmap scan to say which ports are open on the machine. And then it will attempt to do version discovery on each of those services and operating discovery on the system as a whole. And it'll also do a trace around. Oh, yeah, it does. Hold on. <coughs> that shouldn't be happening. Let me make sure I'm uh, actually segregated. Because I may not be. I may have goofed. No? That's interesting. I think what happened was it took the other VMs that I have in that private network that aren't running right now and just said, that's, uh, who knows, we'll figure it out later. So, what should have happened here, yeah, that's what happened. Okay, so it has the IP addresses allocated in VMware for the other virtual machines I have running, but it's not shutting them off. So we're just going to pull the IP address directly from here. Okay, 108.128. This is the right one. Awesome. 
That's what it should look like. As you can see, these are all TCP connections. Uh, we didn't do a UDP port scan. Not very common uh, to have to run one of those. <coughs> And this is the part of hacking they don't show on TV, where you sit and you wait. So, can everyone see this okay? Do you want me to blow it up a little bit? Okay. So we've got FTP, SSH, Telnet, SMTP, HTTP through Apache, Samba, MySQL, and almost none of it is patched. PostgreSQL. Does this make sense to everyone at this point? So how we move from an in-map scan to exploiting, uh, there are a couple of ways to do it. But one of the easiest, go back to exploit database. exploits and you can search. So if you happen to know the CVE number for a vulnerability, you can directly type that in. But in this case, we're just looking for a service to exploit. So What we can do from here, so we know this is running Samba 3.x to 3.x. It, it's somewhere in there. But we can search for a Samba SMBD. You have to prove that you're not a robot, too. This is the best part of the presentation. Good job. <laughs> First try. No results. So we'll cut off the SMBD. Just search for Samba. Can he do it twice? What one of these count is street signs? <laughs> I'm just going to go with everything. I don't see a street sign here. No? No! <laughs> Are you a robot? I, I actually might be. Does, that, does the low bar count as part of the street sign, or there's no actual sign? Alright. So, we pull up quite a few results. This one, uh, I cheated, I read the answers in the back of the book, this one works. Uh, and it runs in Metasploit. So at this point, I want to take a quick, probably 15 minute break. Uh, let's see what time do we have. And come back around 1.55, and we'll get into exploitation. <laughs> Straight up with that bar there. Wow. Damn. She's literally gonna follow you into the bathroom and shank you. Nobody's gonna be there to help you. You may not make it to the bathroom. Right? <laughs> My own brains are in you. That was a really professional statement. <laughs> Take your bow tie off and you get mean? Is that what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> It's like Dr. Gardner and Mr. Bowtie. Good. Okay, so quick recap. Uh, we ran an in-map 
on our vulnerable Metasploit machine. Samba's running, we want to exploit it. At this point, to run Metasploit, just type in MSF console. And Metasploit is a tool set up to compile and run exploits. And it takes a hot minute to set up, especially if it's the first time you've run it. Yes? Metasploit doesn't compile well, exploits. It allows you to use existing exploits by setting all the variables. Okay, that's fair. And, uh, I was thinking of a compilation of exploits. Catalogs exploits and lets you run them. The framework is the correct word to use. The framework. So, we know that we want to run an exploit against Samba. It has a built-in search function, so we can just search for Samba exploits. <clears throat> and we're going to use slow search today. Did you start SQL? It does this every Postgres? time. Anyway. You start Postgres? Uh, I'm not connected to the internet, so it's going to use Did slow you start search. Perfect. Postgres. I did not. That's the reason you're getting a slow search. Even when I started, it's still slow search. Plebs. Plebs. So, I'm going to save us some time. This is the exploit I want to run. Uh, Otherwise, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <coughs> this one works, and it's a live demo, so I'm not going to change it. <coughs> So use we want to show options. So the only options available for this by default are our host and our port, which is just the remote host and port that you're targeting. Yes. Target targeting while well, preset may or may not work. In the case of this, targeting is automatic. But if you're working with a special version of Windows, like with the French language pack, you'll have to change the target. Okay. Yeah, so. Okay. If you'll learn more, check your local library. Let's see, I don't remember the IP address that we're using. And. Good man. Thank you. It will work if you don't capitalize our host, but the creator of Metasploit says to capitalize it, so that's what I'm going to do here. And at this point, uh, type out the word exploit so you look and feel at least ten times cooler and run. So uh, at this point we have a command set. Yes. Go back up. Did you set your L host? You don't need to for this one. Uh, this is it's set it by If HD default. Moore were here, he would be having connection. Would he? Well, you didn't tell it which payload to use. Right, no, that's just going for defaults here. Uh, I'll get into payloads when I do Windows. So. Basic intro to exploitation. We're in, you can do an ls in the root directory. You can do anything you want at this point. Control C out. So, from here, the next machine I want to go over exploiting. Where did it go? Here it is. It is Windows XP. This you're one is at risk. Yeah, you're going to be at risk. Yeah. <laughs> be at risk. Careful. Uh, so we'll turn on firewall just, or some oh, we'll go oh. Man, No, we're fine. It's fine. Windows. <laughs> Nothing yeah, is wrong. Say, here. Oh, this is not the Windows you're looking for. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll just do a quick IP config. Uh, so we're in the same. Search on use icon, icons on your desktop. Oh man. Yeah, come on in. Oh, Jesus. Okay. So, yeah. join the party. At this point, just open a new terminal to run in map. So, 
So this is the IP address for our Windows XP machine. And I wish I could say that this were a purely conceptual exercise, but people still use Windows XP in business environments today. It's not uncommon. A lot around here. Oh yeah. No, the last company I worked for used Windows XP on everything. I've still seen Windows 2000. What company was that? Uh, <laughs> since I'm being recorded right now, I'm going to go ahead and keep that to myself. But the same company uses a sequential code for their safe. What, what, what's the code? <laughs> well, it's, uh, it's a secret. We don't want people to know what it is. So, we can see that this is, in fact, running SMB. <coughs> so, for those of you who are not familiar, MS-08067 is the CVE number for one of the most reliable exploits that has ever existed, particularly for Windows machines. So. Hi folks, I'm Geek here. Unfortunately, we don't have any audio to about the 51 minute, 59 second mark because the Ava Media decided to um, lose its crap. Anyway, I'm working on replacing those with some new equipment, so hopefully this won't happen so much in the future. Sorry for the inconvenience.
This one may have to be four by three fixed, this one, this one. Okay. I cut off the black bars. Oh, that's doing disgusting. Something. Yeah. But uh, we're going again. Okay. So now we've migrated to the explore.exe process so that if something, if SMB gets shut down, we still have a shell. So from here, we can do a hash dump. And here are the hashes for each of the for the passwords on each of the accounts. So, yeah, I'm sorry. This sucker's off. Well, I'm not talking about you. Wow. <laughs> yeah, on. This, but this sucker, Thanks, Bill. Uh, sir, sir, we're right there. This sucker case is really bad. Unlike you, I'm going to take the high road in the middle of my presentation. <laughs> you want this back? And from here, you can feed in these password hashes to Google. Uh, Spoiler alert, the admin password is password. It's <laughs> never that. So does anybody have any questions to this point? Yes. Are we allowed to kick him out? I, so here's the other things you can do with to key log. Post, this is all post explication. Yes. You turn off the A of E, you can shut down the firewall. You can pivot, you can set up routes from Postgres, I mean from interpreter. You can also drop the shell by just typing the command shell, S H D L L. Now you went 32. So you can do who am I? Your administrator. That'll be $20. Oh, $20, huh, for a command that's not recognized in the window shell? Thanks. <laughs> so, what is the command? Oh, it was who am I is not part of the Windows. What? What? Yeah. Well, what is the command? Pineapple choice. What is it? Yeah. You can also add users. You can delete users by using, uh, by just basically using Windows command. Right. Here is the secret. Our shells quickly replacing the um, interpreter as this explication. Unfortunately, my PowerShell is weak, and I need to learn it. Your PowerShell food is Yeah, I have no PowerShell coming through. You're on Windows 7, but you have the PowerShell again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That is about all I had slated for this class. Is there anything you guys want to see? Armitage. Armitage. Okay. I'll be honest with you. I have never run Armitage. Uh, I can tell by the fact that you don't know how to start it correctly. Go ahead. Yeah, exactly. So, you want to help me out here? You're okay. It's because we don't teach arbitrage in my curriculum because I teach it the OCP way, not the script kitty way. I'm sorry, is Ethan around here somewhere? <laughs> so, so uh, arbitrage, as Bill was saying, we don't work with in the program at Marshall. That's not to say it doesn't have its usefulness as a tool. It's great for communicating between pen testers. Uh, it, is a, it is slower than running in the command line. The problem that people have is when somebody knows how to use Armitage, but they don't know how anything is working, and they couldn't do it in a command line. The basis That's my that disclaimer. You should understand what, what your tools are doing at all times. That's my disclaimer. I'm not trying to make and enemies if here. If you don't, you're scripted. So, does anybody have any questions? Yes, when is Armitage going to actually start? I don't know because I don't know how to well, use it. You've got like 512 RAM on that VM? or He killed it. He killed yeah, it. I did kill it. Man, that's the RPC server is basically an IRC server that runs in the background. Okay. 
And uh, so you can use this in teaming. Marmotage is really built for capture the flag events. Uh, there is a professional version called Cobalt Strike. Yes. Yeah, you, you didn't start. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there are some tricks to writing that. But it's a good user, uh, a graphic user interface for Metasploit. If you don't want to pay for Metasploit Pro, which is extremely expensive. We started Postgres. Start. What is it? There's a message that'll pop up in a second. Yeah. You should probably read. Yeah. So if you put it in the attack computer, which is the when we just pop, it will then put that computer at the top in the workspace. Yeah, I have no idea what I'm doing here. It's really slow. <laughs> anyway, you get the idea. So anyway, from here, if you want to look for an exploit, you just click on the exploit. Go back. What is it? Go okay, back to the I closed it. Forget it. <laughs> <laughs> you want my money back. Yeah? I, I didn't tell you to come here. I told you this one was going to be terrible. I don't know. I know if it was. It met all my expectations. Okay. okay. Well, one thing we can talk about is uh, the Social Engineering Toolkit written by Dave Kennedy. Uh, he might have been here yesterday. He was. Is he going to make it today? No, he left. He had to go home. Yeah, he's literally not been home for weeks. And he has three small kids. Uh, the Social Engineering Toolkit makes it just streamlines social engineering and phishing attacks. So we'll go one. We will do a website attack vector. We'll do credential harvesting. Uh, not going to use the site cloner at the moment because this is a private network on my Mac. We do web templates. This is the IP address of the web server that we're going to be running. And we will use Facebook as a template. Start Apache. So. The credential harvester should be listening at this point. Go. Back. We'll take our shortcut to the internet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this should hopefully work. I, right? No, I didn't test this demo before we came here today, so no promises. It doesn't look like it's going to work. But what happens is you'll get, in this case, since it was uh, just the template, it's not going to look anything like Facebook. But you can clone any social media website. It just pulls the HTML and recreates it. And it runs, it runs a web server that looks like whatever page on your Kali Linux machine. And it'll have username and password fields. And that's where the credential harvesting takes place. As soon as you hit login, sign in, whatever, it will record whatever is in the input fields. And then it redirects you to the actual web page. So say Facebook, it will redirect grandma at Gmail with password of pass123 to Facebook and attempt to log in with those credentials. And then keeps the results in a text file for later viewing. 
set is pretty simple to use for the most part. You can also set up uh, Metasploit modules to run through so, uh, through set. So anytime that your web page is visited, it fires that exploit at the target. Uh, it doesn't look like any of this is going to work for me today, though. I won't be able to do demos on it. And that's all I have for today. Go enjoy the rest of the talks. I believe that they're all canceled. Um, they are unfortunately all canceled. I just received. No, there's, there's a Mark Holtz Robinson's going to do a talk at three next door about uh, instant response. And uh, so I'm not going to talk right now. Josh Brunty is doing network forensics with Kali Linux and Sift right now as well. Yeah. Sure. Stop by the Hackers for Charity table. Yeah, stop by the uh, Marshall University Hackers for Charity booth. We're selling snarky hoodies and stickers and t-shirts as well. Yeah, thanks for coming out. Thanks, Sean. Thanks. Yep. Thanks. 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 Thanks.